This is a follow-up video to the one I made dealing with the coconut matrix, the VB audio matrix. And this one is dealing with latency associated with using the matrix, either the coconut matrix, the larger app, or the smaller matrix. So we have the matrix here. And you can see my voiceover mic here. And specifically in this video, I want to show how I'm dealing with latency introduced by using my Yamaha stage piano. And I have connected it via USB. So this is showing up here in the matrix. Uh, it's running at 44.1 kilohertz and can be clocked externally. So it runs at its own master clock, but the audio is still aggregated by the matrix and sample rate converted on the fly. This device has a specific latency to it and probably a few samples of additional latency due to the sample rate conversion. And then all the normal aggregated devices, notably my Dante ACO PCIe card fitted into my main studio computer, has a specific latency, which can be set in the control panel of the device itself. And then the matrix adds its own latency on top of that. So we get an accumulated latency of various audio devices. Also my RME baby face. And I compensated for the latency of my setup in Reaper in a way that it compensates the latency specifically of the Q mixes running into my recording rooms. So that ensures that whenever a talent is listening to a playback coming from Reaper, a Q mix and performs along with it, that his performance or her performance will be recorded exactly at the correct spot in time with regard to the playback itself. I did this by measuring round trip latency, playing back a steady click source from Reaper into the QMix in one room and connected the output of the Hadamp amplifier immediately to the microphone input of that room. So that feeds the signal back from the live room into my door, actually. And so I could monitor and see by zooming into the waveforms, the discrepancy between the steady click that was playing back from Reaper. There was a waveform for that one. And then the re-recorded round trip signal and it wasn't aligned at first, but if I added a specific amount of samples to it, an offset, and I had to uncheck use driver reported latency, this will put every recording I make to the correct spot and is perfectly al aligned to the playback and playing back from Reaper into the headphone of the talent. So that's the general procedure of how I found out how to compensate exactly for the timing offset during tracking. This is now compensated for. And next thing is to do the same with MIDI. And specifically, since this device, my stage piano, will come in into my door via two separate paths. I can use it digitally, the digital output of it coming in via USB. And this will have a specific latency to it. And then the analog outputs of the stage piano are also connected to my system and are coming in into analog inputs, into my converter, and finally into my PCIe audio device here. And then from there into the virtual ACO device, which Reaper is using, which mirrors all the inputs of the physical Dante audio device. So finally, this stage piano comes in by two different ways, and I can choose whichever I prefer at a given time.
And I have created a track template for my stage piano and it's stored here under MIDI keyboards. And essentially the stage piano is labeled P125, Yamaha stage piano. And I prepared four different MIDI tracks for it, already having specified via Rig Control MIDI a specific piano sound in this case on MIDI track one of it. MIDI track two will give me strings. And then I have MIDI channel three giving me a vibraphone. And then finally, fourth channel is prepared to deliver an e-piano sound. So I can immediately record uh, what I mostly use this device for, which is piano, strings or vibraphone. And then it adds Convology, Impulse Response, Reverb to it. And also two channels are, or two tracks rather, are prepared to record the audio at some point. Notably, once during production, the MIDI tracks have been corrected and tweaked to be in their final state. I then want to record them and print them to audio to have audio also as a different option to work with for archiving or to apply plugins and other processing which could not be applied to MIDI. I won't get into explaining everything of this track template, but these envelopes will make sure that uh, every track will load the correct sound on startup. This one will enable me to add the keyboard's reverb effects, just remote controlling the external keyboard so that everything comes up as it is stored in the project. Also, I'm using CC122 here to switch local off actually in the keyboard so that it doesn't produce a sound when I'm hitting a key on it. Only if this data is run through Reaper and then sent back to it with the specific command to use a specific sound. So that one here switches the local function off in the keyboard. So that just makes sure that this happens every time I load this. Now, actually, we have nothing specifically configured, notably with regard to latency compensation. Besides that Reaper accounts for the latency if I send a headphone mix into the recording room, now we will be dealing with MIDI and you will see what happens if I simply record a few MIDI notes now. First, we make sure that this is set to, these two are set to record and not only to monitor the input, which is usually the case. So now we can go ahead and just hit a few notes. So we have the MIDI recording, assuming that the recording of the MIDI takes place on the correct spot where I actually hit the keyboard's keys. This MIDI recording triggered the audio recording and one recording was the P125 via USB and the matrix. And the second track is recording the P125 via a BAE analog preamp and analog to digital converter and then via Dante into Reaper. So a completely different path. And if we now zoom in, we see that we are having the MIDI event, like this one is located here, roughly. I already zoomed in quite a bit. And we see that there's a discrepancy between the USB recording, which is quite late, probably too late to be usable if you want to quantize. The audio via analog path even comes earlier than the associated MIDI event. So it seems to be able to look into the future and play in advance of the triggering MIDI event. This can happen. But still, it's uh, something we don't want. But now the simple way of correcting this 
Let's do just one other pass by setting the time selection to reflect the length of this item. I have a shortcut for this. And then also shorten these. And now I'll be recording on top a second take for each of those, just by playing back the same MIDI again. And for this to work, we set the recording mode to record auto punch into a time selection. And so now if I re-record on top of the two, but not by playing the keyboard now, but by playing it back from what we recorded, So we would assume that the second take now has the same timing offset, which is roughly the case, but not 100%, but more or less. And this is due to the fact that MIDI timing is based on MIDI ticks, and that's typically 95 ticks per second. So MIDI timing is not very precise compared to audio timing. Each time I'm playing this back, we will get a slightly differing offset, but typically it will remain at the same magnitude. So let's see. Yeah, so this time it was like the past before and it should be consistent with the entire recording, so we wouldn't expect to have a different offset at that point as compared to the first note. So once it starts recording, the offset stays the same, and that's exactly where we can now remedy the entire problem. So let's go ahead and just remove these, keep our MIDI, and for a better overview of this, I'll select all nodes and quantize them so that they will be played every one after the other so that we get four times longer each node. And then I shorten every node to make it like more percussive. So now we have a better reference of where the audio has to appear in the waveforms. So if we now record this, no latency compensation has taken place yet. That will do. And we see, like before, the analog audio is ahead of the beat and the MIDI event, and the USB audio is lagging behind and it's a constant offset for both. So you could remedy this in different ways in Reaper, but I'd say the most convenient one I found is going ahead and putting time adjustment plugin into the input fx section of each of these tracks, and then you record a few passes tweaking the amount of latency. In case of the USB audio, we had to shift it forward in time. So there's a minus offset, and I settled on 1,300 samples. Uh, make sure to set wet mix to 0 dB and dry mix to minus infinity virtually to have this work properly, and also milliseconds to 0. We needed to shift the analog audio further back in time, so I settled on 670 samples. And now what happens if I record this with the plugins enabled? Okay, that will do. We zoom in and we see audio has been almost perfectly delay compensated, and the USB path of the b 125th audio is not yet on the exact spot, but that also depends on what sound you choose, because I found that some keyboards have 
an inherent delay in front of the initial waveforms uh, starting. You could redo this test with different, maybe percussive sounds, which are more revealing. So sustained sounds or slow string sounds would not be appropriate, obviously, for this test. But even piano sounds will vary in attack time. That depends on how exact the samples in the keyboard have been trimmed. But if we measure this, so I set this to samples and then get rid of snapping. So I could measure the distance between the initial MIDI event and we get around 380, very tiny on my 4K screen. A very small amount of sample offsets, though that might be one or two milliseconds, and that would not harm your performance. And even a real player would have an inherent latency. So this time will already vary in reality to some extent. And this is inside a specific range of where this is nothing to worry about. If we go ahead and put this onto our vibraphone sound, so the MIDI will now play back vibraphone, and we set time selection to record only into our existing items. We record on top of this with a different sound. And we will see that this sound already has a slightly differing attack. It comes even later, but also in the analog audio path. So that will show that it's probably the sound and not related to how good we compensated for the latency. Our reference signal was perfectly synchronized on the beat, but the resulting audio can vary depending on how exact the samples will be played back from your keyboard. Most of the time, I try to get to a compensation value that rather gives me a laid back feeling, so behind the beat rather than before the beat. So whatever value you insert here to compensate, I'd say it's better for the feeling of the result. The signal is rather behind the beat and comes a little bit late rather than comes in front of the actual beat. That doesn't sound good. So I'm settling with this and I restarted Reaper a few times and reloaded the track template already incorporating these uh, compensation values. So whenever now I print my MIDI to audio, I'm pretty confident to get it recorded on the correct location and don't mess up the rhythmics of my project. And it has been consistent. So every time I load this project or the template, I'm getting consistent results, which are for me close enough to the ideal timing. Yeah, that's on top of dealing with ACO latency and round trip latency in the door. You can also account for MIDI latency. And this is maybe particularly important because if you try to do this via the MIDI devices menu here in the MIDI output list, I could specify a millisecond delay offset for the MIDI going to the P125. But this won't help you here. I messed around with this and changed the values to negative and positive, but uh, it would never shift the recording. So what we would need would be a MIDI input latency compensation and not output latency compensation. And so this is the only way that works reliably and is not too much effort to do. So I incorporated the compensation into my track template and I won't have to think about it in the future. So I think that's a pretty good workaround. Okay, hope this helps. See you next time.